All right, let's dive into something. Well, pr pretty huge. We're apparently right on the edge of a massive shift. Mm -hmm. There's this article from Dr. McCoy. GPT-5 is coming, and it's unreal. And she calls it a genuine paradigm shift. Yeah, that's a strong statement. It really is. She claims GPT-5 isn't just, you know, another update. It's going to make GPT-4 look like a pocket calculator compared to a quantum computer. Wow. Okay. That paints a picture. It certainly does. So today, that's our deep dive. This upcoming GPT-5 model, what it might do, the implications, it's a lot. And the source is Dr. McCoy described as an AI clone of Julia McCoy, interestingly enough. Right. And her article really feels like a wake-up call. She calls this a watershed moment for AI. So our job here, for you listening, is really to boil this down. We want to pull out the key bits of information from this forecast. Exactly. Help you understand why July 2025 keeps coming up as this critical time. And maybe more importantly, what these changes, these really fast changes could actually mean for you. Personally, professionally, all of it. Okay, so let's start with that timeline. The prediction seems to be landing on summer 2025. Mm -hmm. And Dr. McCoy really zeroes in on July 2025 as the moment, the watershed moment, as she puts it. Yeah, even though you hear some maybe more cautious predictions pointing towards December. Right. But what's also interesting is OpenAI's track record, isn't it? They tend to just drop these things. Yeah. Very little warning. Exactly. And the expectation is GPT-5 will probably follow suit. No big fanfare months in advance. Just suddenly it's here. And I think beyond just when it arrives, the article really hammers home that this isn't slow steps. No. It's framed as an AI revolution happening almost overnight. Mm -hmm. That can expect to the title, mm -hmm. right? The unreal part. Absolutely. That speed is uh, a key theme here. It feels almost Abrupt. Yeah, the speed of the transition itself is maybe one of the biggest takeaways. Okay, so that speed sets us up for what GPT-5 can actually do. And the article digs into some pretty mind-blowing capabilities. This is where it gets really interesting. Let's start with reasoning upgrades. This sounds fundamental. The idea is that these models are becoming like step-by-step -step reasoners. Mm -hmm. Thinking it through. Exactly. And GPT-5 is expected to think faster and more accurately, apparently because it's reasoning trace, like its internal thought process. It's getting much more efficient, faster. Yeah. Shrinking, as the article puts it. So it's not just getting the answer, but getting there quicker, more logically, almost instantly, maybe. Like leaps in cognitive efficiency. OK, then there's cogeneration mastery. This one caught my eye. The article mentions OpenAI insiders. Yeah, that they're apparently using their own internal coding tools now over pretty much anything else out there. Which suggests, well, it suggests they've had some kind of major breakthrough internally, right? In how AI can write code. A pretty significant one, it seems. Something we haven't seen publicly yet. Like an internal super coder. Okay. And staying on the practical side, what about reliability? Hallucinations have always been a big issue. Definitely. And hallucination reduction is flagged as a major leap. Think about GPT-3. What was it, like 30% or more hallucination rate? Yeah, pretty high unreliable for critical stuff. Right. But GPT-5 is apparently aiming for less than 15%. That's a big jump in trustworthiness. That is a big jump. It makes you wonder, yeah. you know, how reliable does it need to be before we really start depending on it everywhere? That's the key question for adoption, isn't it? Especially yeah. in sensitive fields. Absolutely. Okay, and this next one sounds ambitious. Everything to everything AI. What does that even mean? Well, it's about integration. Pulling lots of different capabilities together. Like what? Things like real-time, two-way audio streaming. So, actual conversation. Okay. High-fidelity image processing and generation. Video understanding. Maybe even video generation down the line. Wow. Plus, a really fluent, natural-sounding native voice. Mm. Way beyond, you know, Siri or Alexa today. So, interacting with it would feel much more seamless. Like, talking to something that can see, hear, speak, and understand context. That seems to be the goal. Truly multimodal. Truly conversational. Okay, and you can't talk new models without talking parameters, right? The scale. Huh, no, you can't. GPT-4 was around, what, 1.5 trillion parameters? Right. Which is already mind-boggling. Right. These parameters are like the connections, the learned bits in the AI's brain. Exactly. Yeah. And the rumors for GPT-5, they're kind of wild. Yeah. Anywhere from 5 trillion up to 50 trillion. 50. Or even whispers of a quadrillion parameter. Quadrillion. It's hard to even conceptualize that scale. It is. But here's a really important point the article makes. It's not just about making it bigger. Yep. OpenAI's focus, apparently, is heavily on smarter architectures. 
designing the model more intelligently. Uh, so it's not just brute force, it's clever design. That's presented as the crucial shift. Yeah. Better design unlocking more capability, not just raw scale. That makes sense. Smarter, not just bigger. And all this capability, this smarter architecture, it leads into this idea of the Asian age. Right. The article posits that by mid-2025, we're entering this new era, powered by GPT-5 agents. Autonomous agents, what are they actually doing? What does that mean in practice? Well, think about automating complex tasks, workflow automation across different apps. So connecting different software together, making them work without me clicking around. Exactly. Handling API integration smoothly, even tackling complex software development tasks all running more or less on their own. Without constant human oversight. That's the idea. And the really interesting bit is how these autonomous agents could dramatically alter professional work dynamics. Okay, bring it back to the listener. Yeah, think about your own job. What parts of your workflow, your daily tasks, could an autonomous agent potentially take over or assist with? It's worth really considering that. Definitely food for thought. And the performance metrics they're supposedly hitting... They're pretty staggering. Yeah, the benchmarks mentioned are impressive. Like MMLU, that big language understanding test. Near saturation, 95% accuracy. Which is huge. And SWE bench for coding, it jumped from 32% accuracy to 85%. That's an incredible leap for code generation. Then there's advanced math, solving PhD level problems with like 40-50% success. Still amazing for that level of complexity. And multimodal tasks, vision, language, audio together, over 90% success. So what this all points to, really, is AI starting to surpass humans in various intellectual fields. Not just matching, but actually exceeding human performance in specific complex areas. Which ties into another argument Dr. McCoy makes, that expert forecasts are lagging. Ah, oh, right. Calling out some big names. Yeah, she mentions places like MIT, Brookings, suggesting they're underestimating how fast this is all moving. It makes you wonder, are we collectively, societally, really ready for the speed of this change? That's the question, isn't it? Yeah. Because the counter-argument, the 2025 reality in the article, points to stuff that's already happening. Like what? Like hybrid human AI teams already working effectively, functional open source multi-agent systems already existing. Okay, so it's not theoretical. And hitting 30% automation of knowledge work before 2026. So yeah, the argument is the future is arriving faster than many forecasts predict. The shift is well underway, not just on the horizon. So what's pushing this acceleration towards, well, towards artificial superintelligence, ASI? The article highlights three feedback loops. Okay, this sounds important. First, scaling laws solved. Basically, researchers now think they have the mathematical recipe for how to scale compute power and data to reach ASI. So the how-to guide is sort of known. That's the claim. Second, inference time scaling. The longer the AI thinks about a problem, the better the results get, like exponentially better. More thinking time equals much smarter outcomes. Right. And third, this one's kind of wild, Perfect distillation. <laughs> the idea that AI can now teach itself new things, potentially better than humans can teach it. Wow. AI bootstrapping its own learning. Exactly. Self-improvement without direct human supervision being the bottleneck. And what's really fascinating there is how those loops feed each other, right? Yeah. They create this self-reinforcing cycle. Scaling knowledge leads to better self-teaching, which leads to faster progress on scaling. Yeah. It just accelerates. Less reliance on us humans in the loop. The AI becomes its own engine of progress, in a way. Pretty much. Okay, so wrapping this all together, yeah. what's the bottom line? What does this mean for you listening right now? Well, the big overarching implication seems to be GPT-5 isn't just aiming to be better than GPT-4. It's aiming to outperform most human professionals in many tasks. That's a profound statement. And practically, what might that look like? Things like workflows running autonomously overnight. Complex coding getting done without needing teams of developers in the same way. Okay. And just this full multimodal understanding, an AI that sees, hears, speaks, generates, all integrated. True digital cognition, maybe. A level of capability that feels science fiction, but might be here very soon. And the article stresses this transition. It's already underway. It's not starting in 2025. It's accelerating then. Right. So the first movers, the people or companies adapting now. They stand to benefit enormously. Which brings it right back to you, the listener. This isn't just future gazing. Understanding this now could be crucial for figuring out how you adapt, how you leverage this. So just to really nail it down, 
the core message here is that GPT-5 looks like a genuine transformation, not just another step up. Right. It's presented as something that will fundamentally change how we work, how we interact with tech. And the speed of that change is maybe the most critical and perhaps unsettling part. It's happening fast. Extremely fast. And maybe a final thought to leave you with. Consider that perfect distillation idea again. Mm. If AI is getting really good at teaching itself, potentially better that we can teach it, mm. what does that imply for the future of human learning? Our own skills. Mm. How do we adapt when our tools aren't just tools anymore, but are autonomously advancing themselves? And maybe more personally. How could you start experimenting now to become one of those first movers? Yeah. How might you integrate this coming wave into your life, your work, starting today? 